Hi everybody, happy Easter. Welcome to another live edition of The Sewing Report. And yes, the title does say it all. We are talking about purses. Sewing your own bags, purses, handbags. We're gonna talk about my favorite pattern designers and also where I buy all of my purse supplies. So let, let's get into it, actually. I actually forgot something from upstairs, but that is okay. But if you are watching right now, let me know where you're watching from. Happy Easter to everybody. And by the way, this edition is sponsored by my high school prom because I still have the mug I got from prom. The theme was Everything I Do by Brian Adams. And they ran out of champagne glasses for the girls, so I got the mug that's meant for guys. But to its defense, this thing has stood up to the test of time. And years later, I still use it. Keeps drinks cold. And we're gonna be having some water during this episode so I don't lose my voice. So welcome everybody. And I'm actually going to log in here so I can see your comments and see your questions. But thank you for joining me. Obviously it's Easter, but we're still here. Um, apparently we have no life. So on Easter Sunday, we are doing a live show on YouTube. So welcome if you are also joining me. And by the way, we have some visuals and we're in a bit of a new space. We've moved downstairs. So you may hear a cat meowing every once in a while, but that'll be okay, right? So welcome and let me just get set up here so that I can see what everyone's saying if there's anyone even on here uh, because it's Easter. So I don't really know, but we're going to find out. So thank you for joining me once again. And if you, everything I'm talking about today, I actually, I actually went yeah, ahead. If you, everything I'm talking about All right, today, I'm gonna mute myself so you can't hear me talking here. That would be good. Everything I'm gonna be talking about in this episode is actually linked right now in the description box. I decided to be a little more proactive and come up with the list ahead of time. So everything we discuss, there is already a link in the description box. Hello, so ladies, so happy Easter to you. Oh, thank you so much. And this is my Easter Sunday dress, which we just filmed a video for a separate video, but I got it done just in the nick of time. Today is Easter and I finished it last night around 1130. And this is the Sisboom Pattern Company. This is the Rebecca Shift dress and it's in the wonderful Jennifer Paganelli Hotel Fredrickson pattern, uh, fabric which I am totally in love with. I think this color totally rocks. And I will stand up so you can get a little bit of a better view here. So I added a little ruffle on the bottom so that, but well, basically it's kind of a funny story. Um, I ordered two yards of this fabric and they didn't have enough. So they sent me two yard cuts, but they only charged me for a yard, which was very cool at fabric.com. So I had to make this pattern work. So I really had to shorten the skirt. But to make it longer so it wasn't like hoochie length, I added a ruffle on the bottom. Plus I thought that gave it a little cuteness factor. So yeah, we are downstairs. We have, James and I have created a new filming area. We're actually in our front hallway and you can't see this, but the camera right now is in James's workshop. So there's a lot of stuff going on in there and uh, that's a little bit of a train wreck, but over here, it looks all good. So let's talk about purses. Oh, thank you so much, So Lady So. So I guess we have a few, a few people that um, also are not doing anything right now and are joining me. So let's talk about some purses. I've been making purses for several years and it's actually one of the first uh, types of sewing that I tackled. Garments are relatively new to me. So I, I think the first thing I made was maybe a tote bag from one of those free tutorials from Craftsy, which by the way is also linked below. If you haven't checked out Craftsy before, it's an awesome resource for patterns. Oh, and that's one I didn't specifically mention, but there's a link to Craftsy. They also sell purse hardware, fabric, other stuff to make bags, and they have some free patterns and free tutorials and free classes if you're interested in making bags. And let me tell you why I like making bags. Um, it's an accessory that you carry with you every day and it doesn't have any fit issues. So if I'm making like, say this bag, I don't have to worry about whether it fits the bust or whether, you know, it's got enough shoulder room or armhole room, you know, it's one size fits all. And that is one thing that's great about bags is that they look great, but you don't have to worry about any of those tricky fit issues that you do with garment sewing. So if you're trying to transition, say from like, making really simple things like placemats or 
napkins or whatever and you're trying to go another step up, bag making might be a good transition for you because you don't have to worry about the fit issues that you do in garment sewing, but it's also a little more, um, it's, a, it's a little bit of a step up as far as what skills you need. You can learn different things, different techniques, um, how to top stitch, how to install hardware, and it's a lot of fun. And what I've been noticing is that there's so much new hardware, even in the past year or two, there have been some really cool new websites and new Etsy shops popping up on the scene that sell some really amazing hardware. So we're going to talk about some of it. I'm also going to show you a little bit about my own collection and how I always get some of my hardware. And James is here, everybody. Hey, James. Hi, everybody. He's in the back. He doesn't really want to be on camera, but uh, he's going to try to keep the cat from, uh, from ruining the show. So we'll see if that works or not. So first off, I want to share some of my, some of my own purse makes. Oh, and you know what? I forgot to bring my noodle head uh, bag down here. But the three main purse designers that I normally go to are uh, Swoon Patterns. And it's run by a woman named Alicia. She has really cool, very easy to follow patterns that have like some really clever design factors built into them. This is the Swoon Harriet bag. And the cool thing about this, it's like, it's sort of like your standard standard handbag, but then if you need some extra room, these sides unzip and you can make it a little bit bigger so it turns more into a tote bag here. So that's pretty awesome. And then it's got this really neat like flap lock closure, flap lock closure here. And then the insides, it's got some like a zipper pocket built in. And then I think I added, I don't think this pocket was originally meant for this, but I added my own slip pocket in here just for other stuff. I thought this was a pretty, this wasn't too bad to make. And also I added some purse feet on the bottom. And um, so this is actually made in uh, cotton and steels cloud, like this is like cloud, uh, it's called Cloud Notorious Canvas, which is actually the Notorious Collection by Cotton and Steels, one of my favorite basics. And then it's got Jennifer Sampoo's Shimmer 2 collection. And then the inside is, I think this is Lizzie House Natural History and it's blue and silver and it looks like a constellation. So that's pretty cool. So that is one of the, this is one of my more recent bags. Um, so Swoon Patterns is one that I go to. And she also designed this pattern. This is the Swoon Nora. And this is like sort of like a doctor bag. And it's very, again, I love the designs. They're very clever and like kind of ingenious. This also has a flap closure. And then to mimic this whole doctor bag thing, she actually uses uh, poly boning. And I can actually sort of take this out or maybe not. So you see this here, this is actually a piece of like half inch uh, or maybe it's quarter inch. I forgot, it's either half inch or quarter inch uh, poly boning. So you put that in there and it gives it that stiff shape. So this is also done in Lizzie House Natural History fabric. This, this is the dinosaur print which is one of my favorites. I actually made a skirt out of this print. And by the way, Andover Fabrics, I found they are very good for making garments with. Um, I noticed that the print doesn't like come off. I've had that issue before with other lines and it washes well and it sews up well and it's not super stiff. So this is another swoon pattern. Um, this pattern, this is the quarter note clutch. And I actually made this out of something called Mikri glitter canvas vinyl or like mirror glitter canvas vinyl. This stuff is amazing. Like it looks so high end, but it's actually really inexpensive. You can get a roll for like eight or eight or twelve dollars. Um, I get this from Meek Green World Supplies, but I have noticed Sarah of SoSweetness.com has started selling this as well in larger rolls. So Meek Green World Supplies sells this in 12 inch rolls, but Sarah from So Sweetness has started selling them in 18 inch rolls so you can get slightly bigger pieces out of that. Uh, but I thought this was a pretty easy pattern, and this is by Emmeline Bags. She's Canadian-based. The shipping cost will be a little bit, so if you're gonna order something from her, I would recommend trying to place a, a larger order just so it's worth the shipping cost. But this was actually a pretty easy purse. It's a clutch. It's got a slip pocket for like credit cards and stuff. And then I use this beautiful silver hardware that's also by Emmeline Bags. Doesn't that just make it look so like high end? This looks like something from like a Kate Spade bag or like a Michael Kors bag. It's this little like 
it's got like sort of a flat closure. And this is actually one of my favorite pieces of hardware. This is actually one of my favorite purses I've made. And the lining is uh, Allison Glasses X Libri fabric, which matched perfectly. And I actually made a matching outfit out of this fabric. So I could carry the purse with it, but I haven't, I haven't done anything with the purse. And in, I made this about a year ago, and I still haven't made a strap, like a wristlet strap, which is what you're supposed to do, but I haven't done it yet. So that's one thing I need to do is add a little strap so I can carry it. But this can easily fit like a phone, an iPhone, could definitely fit some cash, some credit cards, stuff like that. Oh, and James is back. He's uh, got more purses. Okay, so, wow, you got more purses. Okay, so this is another Swoon Harriet, and this is made out of the um, mirror glitter canvas vinyl. This is um, another, this is also the Swoon Harriet. And it also has Cotton and Steel's very fun sloth print. And then what else? Okay, oh, these are some of my earlier bags that I think are didn't turn out too well. Um, all right, let me try to hold all these. This is a bag I sort of halved from Noodlehead, um, another designer named Noodlehead. I kind of tried to do her, um, her uh, duffel bag. She has a free pattern of, what is it called? Off of the top of my head, I can't remember the name of her pattern. But I made it and I tried to hack it and it didn't turn out so well. Oh boy. And then um, this is Swoon's, oh what? This is one of the earliest Swoon purses I made and I don't even remember the name of this. Oh, the Glenda. So this is like a fun purse. It's got a zipper compartment in the, in the uh, middle of it. So you're basically just making a zipper pouch. Um, but this is kind of a small, fun, little handbag. It's got a magnetic closure. I made this uh, both of these in cotton and steel's canvas and then the bottom of this is actually Robert Kaufman's Essex linen in black. Um, so this was, these were sort of from my earlier days of experimenting. Um, they're not the best bags I've made but you know it just shows uh, when you're on a journey of sewing uh, every, every project is a learning experience and you get something out of it and oh these I've shown previously in videos but these are just some zipper pouches that I made. Um, there really is no designer, I just sort of made these up and I made these out of Dear Stella fabric that I got in a stash builder box. So, all right, we're gonna try to consolidate some of this stuff. We're, we're definitely exploding in purses here. James, thank you very much. If you could take these back upstairs, that'd be great. Unless you wanna carry these around, do you wanna? I think I'm good for you, now. You, all right, you don't want a man bag. And by the way, James also has experience in purse making as well. Um, he made me a bag based on a tutorial he saw in a local news segment. Um, but I think, didn't you put the lining in backwards or something like that? Sounds like, about right. It was something like that, but it was very cute, and I've never actually had a man make me a purse before. So that was a very sweet gesture. So yeah, those are some of the purses I made. Oh, and this is um, So Sweetness's Tudor bag. This is sort of like a design-your-own-adventure type bag. There's a lot of different options for this purse. Um, but it's basically like a tote bag and it's got, it's got two straps on the front, but then it also has like this longer crossbody strap so you can carry it like over your shoulder. And I actually made this in another, this is again in Cotton and Steel's Notorious fabric in gold and silver. And then the rest of the prints are actually from Sarah, Law, Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness's Fantasia collection, which is probably one of the most fun fabric collections I've ever seen. It is... Uh, unicorns and other like whimsical magical fantasy creatures but I loved and actually I have two more yards of this in a cotton wall and I'm trying to figure out what to do with it I think I might try to make a garment out of it or maybe use it as quilt backing but this is from art gallery fabrics and then the inside just has like a slip so it's got like a zipper top and then it's got some slip pockets on the inside oh and here's what I was looking for um, this is actually a roll of that glitter canvas I was telling you about. So you buy them in rolls. This is the one I got from Meek Rewold Supplies. They come in tons of colors. And I gotta be honest with you, it's really easy to sew with. This is not difficult at all. It's got sort of like a canvas backing, so it's not fuzzy. It's thin and it's not super thick or bulky like marine vinyl or anything. So yeah, so these are some of the purses that I've made. And again, I've listed some of my favorite pattern designers below. There's another one new to the scene uh, named Sally. The company's called Sally Tomato, and it sells patterns and very, very neat looking, unique bag hardware. I haven't really tried it out yet, but I'm really curious to because it looks really awesome. 
And again, if you have any questions about some of these purses or you know how they were, you know how I made them or what fabrics I use, um, feel free to ask me, and I will definitely try my best to answer. But that's the fun about bag making, and I will say, making bags and giving them away as gifts. These are some of the best gifts, especially for for the ladies in your life. And here's why: because you know, it's if you're trying to make them a sweater, you need to know their size, and sometimes that can get a little bit awkward, especially if you get the size wrong. But if you're making them a bag, it can be any size, and you don't have to worry about it fitting your recipient. So I've made bags as gifts for quite a few people, and all of them have very much appreciated it. So I think making and giving bags is one of the the best handmade gifts you can give to people, and have and you know they'll actually it's something functional, something they can use. I'm just gonna grab a sip of water real quick. And if you are watching. Let me know, Let, you know, feel free to sh give me a shout out in the comments. Uh, make sure to smash that like button if you like videos like this. Uh, because, again, I'm trying to do this every Sunday. And your feedback would be great. I'd love to know what you think of these. And if you think I should do more, if you think I'm terrible and should just close up shop, let me know. Um, but James and I are really trying to invest um, more time and uh, efficiency to making videos and doing these live shows. That's why we have created this new setup hopefully with slightly better lighting and it's a little easier to see everything. And this is some of my hardware collection. I have more hardware upstairs, um, but I actually use old pasta jars to store a lot of my bag hardware. Um, so I spray painted the tops gold um, and then I just keep a lot of different things. So I've got like some rectangular rings, I've got D rings, I've got purse feet, I've got lots of rivets and I actually ordered some stuff from this website called Pile of Fabric. I noticed Pile of Fabric is sort of transitioning from quilt supplies to bag making supplies. And they had this new thing called Chicago Screws and they just looked really cool. So it's sort of like rivets but not rivets. But they just looked really neat so I thought I would pick a couple bags up just to play with. I haven't played with them yet. Um, but I thought these would be fun um, because a lot of people are starting to add rivets as details like on this bag and I think it's a really you know and it's really fun you don't actually have to sew this clothes then and I think it actually looks cleaner and neater so I will say I'm a big fan of using rivets I do have a rivet setter kit that I got from Tandy Leather which is one of the sources listed below so there's so many places you can get bag cool bag hardware cool bag uh, supplies like that glitter canvas vinyl and there's just so much out there and this is another one of my containers. This is from, I got this container from Aldi and I keep a lot of stuff in here. I've got metal snaps in here that I could not get, obviously as evidenced by my last video, I could not get to work very well. And then in the bottom, I've got a bunch of hardware that I got. Um, and also Etsy is a great place to get bag hardware and supplies. There's a few shops that I've listed. One is like Purse Supplies R Us and the other is like 3 Dan US or something like that. And I've gotten really cool stuff like a, like a lot of swivel clips or D-rings and the 3 Dan Supplies one. I've actually gotten some really cool metal um, purse straps. So those are really great places to get bag supplies is Etsy as well. So yeah, so here are some I obviously bought way too many. I, I have way too many heart, purse hardware supplies to begin with. Um, this is probably going to take me forever to use. There's so many different styles and one of the cool trends I'm seeing is rose gold hardware. I don't have any yet, uh, but I'm definitely eyeing the rose gold hardware on Emmeline Bag's website. That stuff looks so pretty. I would love to make a rose gold bag. Um, they actually sell that glitter canvas vinyl in rose gold. And I'd love to use the rose gold hardware with it and make a 100% rose gold bag. I think that would be amazing. So yeah, so we've got some purse feet. Purse feet come in all different styles and sizes. And it's actually really easy to install. Um, basically, you just take, and maybe I'll make some videos on installing purse hardware. Like, and these are all kind of the same. So it's got like basically um, like, a, like some metal prongs here you make a hole in your the bottom of your bag and you do it before inserting the lining. So you would do it to the bag exterior before you insert the lining and most bags are pretty heavily interfaced 
Um, the most common interfacing is Pellet SF101. And then there's also um, a lot of things like a lot of these bag patterns call for um, another type of stabilizer called Peltex, which is a pretty thick, um, sturdy interfacing. And I actually bought another um, another brand. It's called Stiffy, and it's from this company based in North Carolina, and it's super cheap. It's like $40 a roll, and it's a huge, like it's like 35 yards. So I've got a big roll of that upstairs. But yeah, with the purse feet, you would just poke a little slit in the bottom of your bag, put some fray check on it so that it doesn't, you know, just to protect it and secure it. You slip this through and then these prongs separate and that's really it. So inserting purse hardware really isn't as intimidating as it might think. And again, if you've just joined us, I'm Jennifer Moore here with the live edition of the Sewing Report and we were talking purses, how to sew your own bag, handbag, purse, um, and I'm talking about my favorite pattern designers and also where I get my hardware. So this, yeah, so we're just digging through some of my stuff here. And I've got lots of styles. These are cool. I think I got this from Purse Supplies or Us. And it's just like they're, these are just deep uh, rectangular rings, but they don't have rounded edges. They're just straight up very, very um, square edges, which I thought were cool, a little more modern. You can get purse hardware in like black, gold, silver, rose gold now. You can, I'm sure there's probably some colors out there, uh, but there's so much out there if you're looking into getting the purse making bags or making purses. I would highly recommend you give it a chance. And the three pattern designers I would really recommend if you're just starting out are Noodle Head, and all of these people are linked in the description box. Noodle Head, Swoon Patterns, and So Sweetness. And there's also another company called Emmeline Bags. I'm not as familiar with her patterns. Um, the only pattern I've made is this quarter note clutch and it was very easy. But yeah, her purse hardware is just amazingly gorgeous. Hello, Force is strong with Emily. Well, thank you for joining us on this Easter Sunday. And yes, and again, this, this episode is sponsored by my high school prom mug. Because last Sunday, I talked so much and I keep saying, you know, I'm going to keep these short and then I talk for like 70 minutes and then afterwards I just feel kind of drained and then I lose my voice. So I'm prepared this week and I've got some water just to stay hydrated. So yeah, this collection is getting a little out of control and I'm really trying to use some of this stuff up. So I think I just made two of these the same dress in different fabrics. I think I might actually take a break and make a bag because it's been a really long time since I made a bag. Also, I haven't really made a quilt. I haven't completed a quilt in a long time either. So I think the two things I need to do this year are make a couple more bags and also at least finish one of the quilts I started. Um, I've got this dinosaur print quilt that uh, is my richer plaid quilt. Never finished it still on the quilting part. I really need to try to get some of that stuff done, but this purse hardware is just really calling to me. And I think I need to do something with some of this because I don't want it to go to waste, you know? So if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any comments, love to hear them. Hear what you think. And do you make purses? Have you tried them before? If so, what are your favorite bag designers? And also what kind of hardware do you like to use? I'd like to know. Um, so yeah, we're just hanging out, and uh, it's the, I haven't seen the cat in a while, actually, but I thought it would be sort of funny if she started meowing in the middle of this. But thank you for joining me on this Easter Sunday, because I know, um, I'm sure a lot of you people have better things to do than me. Um, I'm just here, and James is, James actually shot two of his, he's actually started making some of his own cooking videos. He's a chef, so he's actually making videos to post on our other channel that's called More Approved. So if you like cooking and baking, he has a few videos up already. He's got one on how to make espresso, how to ground your, make uh, roast your own coffee beans, and another on a really great basic dough recipe. So feel free to check out our other channel if you also like baking and cooking. And he's got he's got a lot more coming your way. He's gonna make. And last week there was a uh, someone who suggested we were talking about chocolate truffles and champagne and twist. If you're out there. James actually bought some ingredients to make chocolate truffles. So that is one of the next videos on the list. So again, thank you for joining me. Um, 
So yes, yeah, so I just wanted to get together, share some of my bags, talk about some of my own purse making experience, and uh, show you some of my bag hardware. So I appreciate y'all joining me. I'm going to try to keep this episode short this week, but if you have any um, suggestions for what kind of topics you'd like to see us chatting about in the live show, feel free to put them in the comments below and maybe that will be one of the future shows. So I will see you guys next time. Peace out, and I gotta go turn off the camera now, so I'm going to be jumping out of the frame.